It's a rainy day here in Seattle. I thought I would spend some time playing with the Mandel Broad set. So there's lots of YouTube videos showing off the Mandel Broad set, which is a, a famous fractal. And you can spend hours and hours zooming and scrolling through the Mandel Broad set, finding beautiful images. It's interesting because you can zoom into the Mandel Broad set further and further and further. There's really an infinite amount of detail in the Mandelbrot set. It's very cool. I spent literally hours and hours zooming and scrolling around the Mandelbrot set. Let's go back to the beginning. So in this video what I want to show is not just beautiful Mandelbrot images, which is fun in itself, but I want to show some of the structure which is in the Mano Broad set, which many people may not realize. Uh, I, I didn't know this until I came across a video by a woman called Dr. Holly. Oh, I've forgotten her last name. Uh, I'll look it up. So on the Fractally webpage, there's a videos page. Uh, yeah, Dr. Holly Krieger if I'm saying that properly. And on this page, this is the video, which is the one I want to dive into in my video. So I encourage you all to, at this point, <laughs> pause my video, uh, play this one, and then come back to my video. Okay, welcome back. <laughs> uh, so what Holly is describing is the Fibonacci sequence and how the Fibonacci sequence appears in the Mandel Broad set, uh, which is totally surprising to me. And once you see this and understand it, you just, you can't look at the Mandel Broad set in the same way again. It's just, it's fascinating. So for those of you who don't understand the Mandel, the uh, Fibonacci sequence, it's a sequence uh, which is formed by adding two numbers to find a third. So we start the Fibonacci sequence with 1, 1, and the third number is the previous two added together. So 1 plus 1 equals 2, 1 plus 2 equals 3, 2 plus 3 equals 5, 5 plus 3 is 8, and so on. So coming back to the Mandelbrot set, and after you have watched Holly's video, you, the Fibonacci sequence is formed by assigning the number one to this point to the right of the main bulb, and number two to this main bulb. So we have points one and two, and in the Fibonacci sequence, one plus two is three, which gives you the third number in the Fibonacci sequence, or fourth, sorry. And to find the three bulb in the Mandelbrot set, you look for the largest bulb in between the previous two numbers. So one is over to the right, two is over to the left, and three is the largest bulb between those two, which is this one. And if you look at this image, we see three little antennae coming off of the main uh, uh, three bulb. And actually, if you look around this, there's threes everywhere. There's three antennae over here, three antennae over here, uh, three here. If you zoom in, there's threes. Well, just there's threes all over here. So it's interesting that if you didn't know anything else about this image, you could look at this and count how many antennae there were, and you know immediately that this image is, is associated with this three bulb off of the uh, the main Mandelbrot set. Very cool. Oops. Okay. So the next number in the Mandelbrot set, uh, we have two plus three over here. So if we add two and three, we get five. And here's the five and this bulb is the biggest one between three and two and if you zoom into this bulb it is five so here's five antennae five antennae at the end 
And if you zoom in all over, there's fives everywhere again. Five, five, five. Let's do that again. So if we do five plus three, that gives you eight. And this is the largest bulb in between five and three. And there are, in fact, eight antennae here. And again, if you zoom in, there's eights everywhere. Uh, so it's interesting in that it, the Fibonacci sequence is here, uh, but it's really any, you can pick, once you know the numbers of some of the bulbs, you can find the largest bulb in between those two numbers and add them together. And that gives you the cycle period or, or period of that new bulb. So here we have number three on top. Number one was down to the right here. If you add three and one, it gives you four. And you look for the, lar the largest bulb in between three and one, which is here. And this is indeed the number four bulb. Again, there's fours everywhere. Four there, four here, four over here, four over here. Very cool. And you can just pick a number. Say I want 11. Well, <laughs> where's 11? Well, seven, let's do seven first. So here's, a, here's three. Three plus two is five. Five plus two is seven. So this will be the seven bulb. Uh, if you want to add two more to seven, that gives you nine. Here's the nine. And you add two more to nine, that gives you 11. There's one 11. Uh, so are there any more 11s here? That one's 11. Uh, if we add three plus one, it gives you four. We, we found four earlier, there's four. And now if you add one, look for the largest bulb between a four and a one, that gives you five. Here would be a five bulb. And add one more because Look for the largest one between five and one. It gives you a six. And seven, add one more, add one more, and so on. That gives you, you can find the 11 by doing that sequence. And again, you can go between any of these. So we have a three, this is number four. If we add three and four, that gives you seven. This little guy will have seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is basically Holly's video, or it's kind of, it's a demonstration of what Holly was showing in her video. And she goes into more detail about some of the mechanism behind how this works. Looking at rational numbers and mappings, and it's pretty interesting. You should need to watch that. But what I want to do in this video is show some different ways of looking at these cycles or Fibonacci numbers. So this program fractally is able to show Mandelbrot sets, Julia sets, and Mandelbrot orbits. And in this part of the video, I want to introduce the Mandelbrot orbit. So there's many videos and web pages which describe the Mandelbrot formula, which is a simple formula. Uh, it's using complex numbers to iterate a value and there are some criteria for when it, it, uh, the iteration stops. And every point can be classified as being either inside the set or outside the set, inside or outside the Mandelbrot set. Points inside the Mandelbrot set will iterate forever, and points outside the Mandelbrot set uh, end up exploding or escaping the radius. And as we move around the Mandelbrot image, we're seeing the initial point, uh, which is indicated by the crosshair on the right, as a white dot on the left. And as we go through the Mandelbrot iteration, each of the new iterated points is shown as a dot uh, with a line between them. Uh, and it turns out that the shape of the Mandelbrot orbits can also be quite interesting. So it turns out that the Mandelbrot iteration also has some interesting properties. Uh, the orbits 
have <laughs> symmetries and shapes. So as you move around the Mandelbrot image, the orbits take on different shapes. Uh, sometimes they're quite random and chaotic, and sometimes they take on some really Im interesting symmetry properties, which is pretty cool. And I, do, I don't think I've seen this discussed in any other YouTube videos. So we just learned that the Fibonacci sequence appears in the Mandelbrot set, and we can see that by looking at the little antennae at the top of the bulbs. So let's use the Mandelbrot orbit and see what we see. So again, we have number one point to the right, number two, number two bulb is to the left, and the number three is up here. And as we move around, you'll notice that the orbit takes on the symmetry of the bulb that it's close to. So here, here we're close to the number three bulb, and the orbit is taking on the last three legs uh, over by the two. Uh, I guess that's the shape for two legs. Uh, between two and three we have five. Over here we have five legs. If we go between three and five, that's eight. Here's the eight. Eight legs. If we go between five and two, we have seven. So that's cool. I don't. <laughs> so again, you can look at the orbit image and uh, determine what periodic cycle you're close to. So that's interesting. And uh, that's still in the main bulb. So the question I ask myself is what happens if you go into the bulb? So here we're very close to the three. If we go into the three, the legs split apart, and now we have three separate groups rather than one connected group. So here we have one connected group. We go into the three, and that splits off into three different groups. If we try that with the five, go into the entrance, and it splits off into th five separate groups. And that's interesting. So let's go zoom in here. So everywhere in here is the five. And we know from earlier that this is the one point and the number two is opposite. So what happens if we go into the two? So all of the groups which were part of the main groups in the five are now split into two. That's interesting. So what if I go to the three? So between the two and the one we have threes. So the largest bulb between the two and the one will be three. So let's zoom in here. Here's the three. So we have five main groups. And they've just split into three separate groups. And as we get close the ends of the five take on these three legs, just as they did in the main bulb. And if you go into it, they split apart into three separate groups. <laughs> so this area is a the five three area. Interesting. And if you zoom in further here, let's find another number. So we have five main groups split into three separate groups. Here is the number two, this is the number three, and this will be number four up here. So let's go into the four, and as we approach the four, you'll see that each of these groups is taking on a spiral with four legs, and as you move in, the legs split apart into four. <laughs> Interesting. So there's a ton of symmetry in this set I didn't realize until I started exploring it with this tool. The Mandelbrot orbits are showing just a ton of symmetry. It's interesting. So this program, Fractally, is also able to show Julia sets. So let's do a little bit of that. Go back to the main Mandelbrot. 
hit this button and this is the Julia set on the left and Mandelbrot set on the right and as you move around the Mandelbrot set the associated Julia set is shown on, on the left so the Mandelbrot image can be thought of as an index into the different Julia sets and again you can find all t a ton of beauty in uh, the Julia sets but since this video is mainly talking about these periods or cycles let's go and let's figure that out so this is the number three bulb and uh, I guess you can see there's three there's the main bl black area uh, and on each side of it there's three so let's see if that pattern holds if we go between three and two two is over here to the left we have five over here so that what happens if we go inside here yeah check that out five legs if we go between five and two that gives us seven check that out seven legs in the Julia set and once again let's stay inside this seven bulb and go into one of its children so here we have seven and this is the two and let's go to three so between the two and the one the entrance is three and the largest bulb between two and one is over here so now if we zoom in here there are seven main legs and we're in the three bulb uh, so where are the number threes so there's a three there there's three main uh, of these black areas the inside areas off of this point here's a three over here there's a three down here so the image is the image is a collection of sevens and threes Uh, what happens if we zoom in further? Let's try and find a four. So we're in seven, three, and we'll find four here. So this is two. Three is the largest bulb. Four will be the next largest. So three is here. Four is going to be inside there. Use the slider. There's a four okay so we have seven of these big spirals there are threes here's a three one two three so where is the four it can be tricky finding the different numbers uh, but it's going to be here somewhere. Okay, there it is. It is, and actually, if I improve, if I increase the iteration count, that will probably help with this. At the moment, there's 400 iterations being used in the amount of broad set. Let's go to 800. Double that. There's a four. So there's four of these arms in this image, and there's four there. There's a four here. Here's a four. <laughs> so it's very cool. You can, by looking at where you are, what cycle, what bulb you're in, in the main Mandelbrot image, you can predict the uh, the Julius set image. So yeah, that's very cool. I didn't know that. So yeah, thanks Holly for uh, making your video. Uh, if you want to explore this stuff on your own, there's a program called Fractally, which is available on the Mac and iOS, iPad, iPhone. It's a free download. Look for it on the Apple App Store. And uh, yeah, enjoy.